Retro TV, your home. Retro TV, your home for classic television. The greatest shows in history are here for you to enjoy. Join Cosby and Colt as secret agent men in I Spy. Ride along the Ponderosa with the Cartwrights in Bonanza. Hit the beat with Joe Friday in Dragnet. And that's not all. Retro TV offers endless fun and excitement for the whole family to enjoy. Retro TV, the best in classic television. You can find Retro TV on Over the Air Channel 13.4. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today we're talking to one man who has a survival story that is unbelievable. He survived the vicious war during the 1940s in Germany, survived the Allied bombing and much more. He's here to tell his story. He wrote a book, 436 Me TV, option 11, back in a moment. <laughs> Back to the program here on Connect with me on this uh, Tuesday morning, and uh, we're glad that you're along for the ride once again. And I do want to mention that we're going to be talking about this book in just a moment. Uh, this book is a fascinating book. You have to get it. It's called A Bridge uh, to Cross: The True Story of One Family's uh, Flight from the uh, Nazis During World War II. We'll talk about that in a moment. But time to remind you that you are watching us live on three different stations. That would be Comcast Channel 187. Uh, and then if you have an antenna, a digital antenna, you can watch us on 43.6 and 13.1. Later in the day, my friends, the replay comes over the air, 2 p.m., 13.6 U2, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6 Biz TV. And you can catch the Twitter account at John Malos, uh, me TV. I mentioned the book today, and it really is a story about survival during World War II. Miracle after miracle after miracle. This man, who's in the studio today, survived the Allied bombings during the war, and he and his family survived much more. I want to go to the videotape, show you exactly what I'm talking about. You're looking at Hans Berger, German-born, who along with his mother, his father and three sisters dodged minefields. They dodged battlefields, bombs hailing down from the U.S. and English warplanes during World War II. Even the German soldiers were looking to arrest his mother. And when they finally escaped Heidelberg into Prussia, somehow they all survived the onslaught of the brutal, vicious Russian army, the Red Army, which raped and killed millions of women and children as they made their way east uh, into Germany. Hans, who was an infant during the war, was cared for and watched over by his big sister, Herta. All the while, his mother was trying to keep the family alive as the, in, the, they encouraged uh, themselves to try to stay alive. Tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. The family picking up and moving from place to place during the war, and I mean dozens of times, traveling through the snow on a sled, through a blizzard, and other treacherous weather conditions. Food and medical care were in short supply. How the family managed to hang on until the war ended is beyond me. Eventually, they made their way back to Heidelberg as the war finally ended back in May of 1945. Truly is a miracle. I'm gonna show the book full screen now. And there it is. Hans Berger has written a book about his survival during the war, A Bridge to Cross, the true story of one family's uh, flight from the Nazis. The book is an easy read, only about 250 pages. It will have you shaking your head. The Berger family eventually moved to Denver, Colorado after the war ended. We'll get into that. Live in our studio right now, Hans Berger. He's alive and well, my friends, as you can see in the flesh, ready to tell his amazing story. 
You know, the Americans, they lost nearly 500,000 soldiers during World War II. The war lasted six years, as, as we all know. And some of those World War II heroes here are still alive. They've been on this program. But today, one man is here, a German who survived, wanted to escape uh, Nazi Germany, led by Hitler during the war. He and his family made it out. 436 Me TV, option 11. Back in a moment. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music. Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the low price leading brands reliable advice place. The Frigidaire Gallery Dream Kitchen Get Yours Today place. You with me? Right now get huge savings on select Frigidaire Gallery appliances and pay no interest when paid in full within six months at the hometown low price think outside the big box place. Since 1951 Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're working hard to be your place. Back here on the program today, connect with me on MeTV Fresno, and you can call in at 436-MeTV, option 11. Hey, we're talking about this, a uh, bridge to cross. This thing is written by Hans Berger. It's one of the most amazing, fascinating stories. And yes, my friends, uh, I did read the book. I read it cover to cover, and um, it's, it's easy to read, but difficult to follow because you, were, you survived so many tragedies Hans Berger welcome to the program Thank it's you. amazing I couldn't keep track of all the places that you kept picking up moving day in and day out you were in a different place how did you survive really how, how in your mind did you your three sisters and your mother survive not only the Nazis but the onslaught of the Russian army well my mother um, first of all God gave her the strength and he gave her what they, she said, the sixth or seventh sense, she could see ahead what was going to happen. Where people, most of them went to the right, she always went to the left. She, she never traveled with the masses of people. And that saved us many times because they didn't go, they were overpowered by the Russians, something happened. So God made a way for us because of her that we survived. It's, it's just the whole thing is a miracle. So you think part of the reason is because your mom, she saw these masses of people, these Germans who were in Heidelberg and other places as you guys traveled east, she didn't go with the mass crowds. No. Mm -mm. She went in the opposite direction. And what was her thinking at the time? Well, Why? Why? It, she saw something happening in the future. She could see what was going to happen, the end result. So I think it was meaning all, what? I think it was all God uh, intervening. You know, don't go this way. Go left. And and she, she listened to God. That's what she told me. What happened to those masses that went? Uh, they the didn't other make direction? it. A lot of them didn't make it. They starved to death. Uh, hunger, cold, diseases overtook them. Uh, the Russians slaughtered them. Uh, it was it was just horrible. Why do you think that she survived by going the other direction? Was was your was your family were they if they didn't travel with the masses were were you left traveling on your own? Yes, basically? always, always on our by ourselves. Really, and there were um, instances where Russian soldiers in uniform in battle gear were actually angels that that saved us. I want to put up a map of Heidelberg, Germany. And I'd like you to tell us where Heidelberg is. Go ahead and leave that up there for a couple of minutes there, Lauren. Um, Heidelberg is located where in relation to, say, Munich or Berlin or perhaps Frankfurt? Okay, uh, Munich is uh, approximately 300 kilometers south of Heidelberg. Mm -hmm. Heidelberg is the, has the oldest university in Germany. It was founded around 1100. Mm -hmm. uh, Berlin is to the, to the uh, East, about uh, 400 kilometers to the east, Berlin. Mm -hmm. And where we, we had to travel to get to East Prussia, where we ended up, it was about uh, uh, 500 miles, something like that, east. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, then when the Russians came in, you see the border right there where Poland is. Yeah. What happens <clears throat> at the end of the war, Russia took part of Poland and Germany, and then Poland moved west. They took part of Germany. Mm -hmm. So like Silesia, Schlesien we call it in German, Silesia is Polish. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> a lot of these towns, uh, they change their names to, to Polish names. Um, Dresden is, is, is in, thank God it's in Germany still. Dresden was bombed flat, I mean, they leveled Dresden. Right. And, and so Heidelberg is right in the middle, as you can see, right. the red star right there. So your family, you were born and raised in Heidelberg. I was born and raised there, yes. Okay, and then when the Allies started bombing, like uh, the U.S. And, and Great Britain, you started, you and your family, your, your father stayed behind in Heidelberg because what was he doing? He was a pathologist. They needed him in the hospital. At the university? <clears throat> yes, at the hospital, and he treated American soldiers, German soldiers. They took anybody in that was injured, okay? Like... Uh, airplane crashes and they took them in and, and, and uh, took care of them. So, so he, you and your mother and your three sisters, you were just an infant. What were you, two, two years, years old? old? Two years old. You started moving east of Heidelberg towards right. Poland? Right. How far did you get? <clears throat> we went uh, just about to the, to the border we see right there, no Odenaise line. Mm -hmm. We crossed the Odenaise line, that's the border right there to Poland. Right. Then we uh, probably traveled another couple of hundred kilometers east of there. Where uh, East Prussia is, East Prussia doesn't show it up there, but it's um, Kaliningrad, it's Russian now, it's a big uh, Russian uh, naval port, right. naval base, and that's how far we went. That's where she grew up, is in Königsberg, it's Kaliningrad today. But eventually, eventually you went far east into Prussia, but then you started coming back. We came west. back, yes. And we, Why? Because the Russians came, and uh, we tried any way we could to get away from the Russians, traveling West. <clears throat> At times we didn't know where we. My mother was so uh, she she panicked. A lot of refugees, they panicked. They didn't know where they were going, east, west, north. They did not know. So she thought she was going west, and <clears throat> on the way west, a lot of things happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, there were Russians everywhere, and um, uh, what they did is, you read the book. Uh, they came into a. Uh, a house where a lot of uh, single women were, were there with their children. Of course, you didn't see any German men. They were all fighting, or, you know, they, they weren't even near the place. So they had to fend for themselves, and the Russians came in. It was brutal. Um, they killed, they raped, they, it was horrible. Yeah. All right, we're talking with Hans Berger. Got to take a break here on Connect With Me. The book is A Bridge to Cross, the true story of one family's uh, flight from the Nazis uh, right here. Hans Berger wrote this book. It's about 250 pages. We'll tell you where you can get it, buy it, and read it. And uh, you can call in, ask a question about World War II. Uh, this man actually lived it. He survived the Allied bombing, survived Nazi Germany, Hitler and his henchmen, and also survived the Russian army in the cold, and obviously uh, survived uh, with very little food. Anyway, 436, Me TV, option 11. The call is coming in. We're going to come back in a moment. On Connect With Me. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. So it's a story about survival. It's amazing how many miracles happen during the, uh, the journey. Hans Berger is here. We have a phone call. Go ahead, Carter. You're on the air. Yeah, I, I just, you asked from a, uh, can't can't hear you. As far as can't okay. can't can't hear you. Go ahead, speak up. Okay, a personal question in in the sense that they were caught in between you know, and with the Allies and all the bombing and the Russians and the Germans <coughs> and Hitler. Did you ever hold a grudge for your family for being caught in the middle, where uh, being? Persecuted more or less, like you say. Uh, your mother really was a, a a smart woman and a brave woman to to know more or less that to get out of there, you know. But the Russians, did you ever have a, a even right now? Did you ever have a, 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 a kind of a hate thing with with the Germans and the Russians? Uh, because 
me myself or people like like, like myself would really probably have a, a, a little hate behind my head and <laughs> because you know what what they did to the people and whatnot you know but this is a personal question to you you've gone through a lot but your mom went through a lot more and trying to keep your you kids together and, and and i commend her for that but to this day do you have any uh i'm not saying too much of a well there has to be some hate and uh you know I, it would be like me but that, that's the only question i want to want to know yeah uh, the, i have no hate for anybody <clears throat> the only guy i was close to hating was hitler and and all the stuff he pulled uh, <clears throat> my mother she saw what was happening in Germany, so um, she felt compelled to tell other people what was happening. She told them Germany was losing the war and what Hitler is doing. He, she listened to the BBC radio, which if you were caught listening to enemy stations, automatically you were killed through f by a firing squad. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but she didn't have to do that at all. Had she been quiet, not say anything, we would have never had to move anywhere. We would have been just fine. So, in a way, <clears throat> I kind of blame my mother for doing this, but she felt she had to tell people what was happening. She, it was her obligation, and we had to pay the price. I don't have any hatred to the Russians or the Germans. The Russians, it was just a payback what the Germans did to them when they marched into Russia. It was just, just revenge. That's all that was. Did yeah. I answer your questions? Yeah, he's no longer there, but I think it probably did. But I do want to kind of go this through a chronological order a little bit. Uh, let me put up a, a, a series of pictures. We have three of them right now of Heidelberg, uh, Germany. We mentioned uh, where exactly Heidelberg is located. So we've got the three photos of what Heidelberg looks like today. We'll put those up there, put, put up picture number one, and then we'll go just uh, uh, through them. There mm. is the city right now. I don't Beautiful know what picture. year that was taken, but just absolutely gorgeous. Looks like it kind of sits on a hillside and near a river. What river is that? Okay, it's the Necker River. Uh, that's the castle. It, it, it hasn't changed any. It's been like this for years and years. Uh, in the 17th century, the, the French burnt the castle, half of it, and it was never restored. <coughs> what so castle is that? Heidelberg Castle. You know, okay. A Schle they call it and a it's been there for how long? A Schloss. Uh, probably uh, 1,200 years, 1,000 years, something like that. Amazing. We lived on the other side of the Necker River uh, when I saw the castle all the time. I, when I was a little kid, I was by the window watching the, the traffic, the, the boats going up and down, delivering goods, feeding the seagulls. I mean, I had a good time, okay? But right. Heidelberg is gorgeous. Yeah, let's go to the next photo here, and we'll just take a look and see. There's the bridge again. <laughs> and the name of that bridge is, bridge is what, Oder Nice? No, this is not. The Necker Br 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 Bridge. Okay. Uh, Oder okay. Nice was the, uh, where we fled. We had to cross that river, the Oder River, to get to the west. Gotcha. But this is another gorgeous photo uh, showing, obviously, uh, Heidelberg. And the next one uh, will show another uh, vantage point uh, here of Heidelberg. Go ahead and change it. Change the photo. We don't have, do we have the photo? Oh, we only have two. Oh, I thought we had three. Why didn't you tell me that before the show? <laughs> no, see, see that church in the middle, that church? is where my mom and dad got married. Okay. That, that church in the middle there. All right. Okay. So let's take a break. Let's collect our thoughts. 436, Me TV, Option 11, back in a moment. Almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, oh, no. and television the Me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. We get our speed from mom and dad. They do stuff super fast. And now they got this new kitchen, so they're even faster. So they can help us with our free throws. The time-saving Frigidaire Gallery line with a quick preheat and smudge-proof stainless steel that resists fingerprints and cleans easily. It's mealtime in no time from start to clean. Frigidaire Gallery. Save more during Frigidaire Gallery bonus days when you buy three or more qualifying appliances. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. 
All right, back here on the program, connect with me. We are talking with Hans Berger, 436 MeTV Option 11. And I want to continue talking uh, a little bit about what happened. We saw um, the photos and the map of uh, Heidelberg. And um, so this is kind of how this whole thing started. When the Allies started bombing, they didn't really bomb Heidelberg that much, did they? No, they did not. Go ahead. Uh, what happened was the, the bombers, they... Uh, dropped leaflets to the population telling them that uh, the United States had plans to uh, make uh, Heidelberg their army headquarters for Europe. So they spared Heidelberg for the most part. It's okay. Go ahead. And um, so we were saved uh, because of it. Mannheim, next to about 20 kilometers away or 30, they were leveled because it was industrial. But Heidelberg was spared most most of Heidelberg was spared, uh, except for the train station where we left. It was bombed, but the Germans uh, rebuilt it so it would allow limited traffic. So Heidelberg wasn't damaged as much as, say, Frankfurt was oh, no, during, no, during no. the Allied bombing, uh, bombings when the U.S. Thank and so much. Uh, both England uh, were bombing, right? <coughs> England and, and, and uh, of course, the U.S. First they did uh, daytime bombing, and then they resorted to nighttime bombing. That's when it got really uh, dangerous. Right. So so your your departure from Heidelberg was sparked by what? Your mom listening to um, to the radio, right? Did, uh, and what radio was she listening to? Uh, BBC. You, she was listening to the BBC, and somehow the Nazis found out that she was listening to the radio. Right. Uh, basically listening to the enemy right. give the news and that was a no-no uh, you could also you could be shot for that oh, right? yeah I mean no no questions asked okay uh, so is that why you guys started traveling east out of uh -huh. Heidelberg because your mom was going to be arrested right uh, there was a lady there were ladies who were always uh, getting together mm -hmm. for a coffee clutch and so on and, and there was a lady amongst them uh, they didn't hold anything back. They t told how, how to talk to each other and kept a secret. Well, her 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 uh, husband was an SS officer. Nobody knew he was an SS. She leaked information to him. So it got back to my mother through a friend of hers who was in the city government. Frau Berger, you better leave tonight. They are on. They're going to arrest you tonight. This is it. So we had to pack up real quick and get to the train station and get out of there. And and the train station was full of German troops going to the Eastern Front. Okay. And, and there was all Germans, young kids, you know, soldiers. So we were among them and they wondered, what, what were you doing? What, what, what this family? You know, we said, well, we're going to see her her father who is in Heidel, uh, who is in Berlin. We're going to visit him. He's up in age. And when we got there, uh, found out that he was a card-carrying Nazi and she did not trust him. So now we were in a dilemma. Staying there would have put us again in jeopardy, and leaving put us, would put us in jeopardy because of what lied ahead, but we did not know what was coming. So we left there, and then we stayed with a couple of relatives. My mother was hard to get along with sometimes. Uh, she told people what she thought, and which was, <laughs> she was not diplomatic. Right. So they got the fill of us real quick. Then we con continued to travel, uh, where my uncle grew up, and where he had a little uh, flour mill and stuff, but he had joined the uh, German army, and he fell uh, when the first uh, Barbarossa campaign into Russia, he fell, okay? Then all of a sudden, uh, suddenly the Russians came across the East Prussian border, and all hell broke loose. That's when it all started. Mm -hmm. And we just uh, very f fortunate that we survived. We walked through battlefields, minefields, without a scratch on our heads. It's totally remarkable. We had bombs all over the place, a shooting. We went through, walked through a battlefield where my sisters and my mother saw things nobody should see. Uh, they found, my mother said they found a helmet. They turned it over and half of, his, half of the head was encased in the helmet. I, s I read that, yeah. And then she found a note she, she had to gain composure to read the book, uh, the, the, the note, and it said, us Germans, we did horrible things. Now it's just a payback. 
That's what he, and he was, that was a letter to his wife. But you didn't initially leave uh, Heidelberg because of the bombing. No. You left because your mom was on the verge of being arrested right. for listening to the BBC radio. Exactly. Why didn't she just leave on her own, leave you kids behind with your father? Uh, had we, uh, that's one thing I don't understand. Had she left by herself, she wouldn't have made it. She would not have survived. Okay. Because the Russians took pity on us kids a lot of times. Yeah. They loved us little kids. They played with us. If she had been on her own, I don't think she would have made it. Right. Let's roll the videotape. It's the Oder Nicey Bridge. You actually crossed this over the Oder River, right? Right. During the war. And um, like you said, you went from house that you couldn't even trust your grandfather no. because he was a, um, you know, he carried a Nazi card with him. And he could, you know, at that time, Hitler was encouraging people to turn their relatives in. Exactly. Is that right? Yes. Right. So um, you walked through minefields, like you said, night in and night out. You were at a different house. You had to battle the weather, the cold, blizzard. How in the world did you guys survive with bombs going off, um, uh, shootings everywhere, people getting raped and pillaged and murdered? It's just uh, the whole thing is a miracle. Uh, what really stands out, one, one day we were traveling with a sled. Don't ask me how my mother got all this stuff. But she had a sled and we traveled. She didn't know where she was going, but there was heavy snow. And I was... They packed me on top of the sled because I was too young to walk with them. During my, a blizzard? Yeah, during a heavy blizzard. They walked and walked. And my older sister, Hatha, she looked back and I wasn't on top of the sled anymore. She said, my God. You fallen off? Yeah. What happened to him? How long ago? Where did we lose him? So my mother says, and, and my sister, well, we better go back and try to find him. But we didn't, she didn't know which way to go left or right. She had no idea because the, the snow covered all the tracks. So, okay. and there were no landmarks. Everything was bombed, there was nothing there. And she traveled back and thank God she traveled the right direction and there was a little lump of snow ahead. She thought maybe it was a Russian soldier fallen or a tree stump or something. She said, let's keep on going, but be careful. And they got closer and it was me buried in the snow. And yeah. I wasn't crying, my sister said, I just lifted up my arms, she grabbed me and. Yeah, and that, that was, was it. it. Yeah. That was it. How old were you at that time? Two? About two. About two. About two. At what point <coughs> did your mom decide that you needed to tr start traveling back west toward back towards Heidelberg because the tidal wave of Russian soldiers was incredible? Oh yeah, they were everywhere. There were tanks everywhere. And everywhere. Russian sol thousands of Russian uh, soldiers. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, hundreds it of wasn't, thousands. You couldn't get away from them. They were there. Right. For, uh, every turn. So at what point, how far east did you go before you started turning back toward Heidelberg? Uh, probably at that point, um, 800 kilometers, 700 kilometers. That's a long ways. Yeah. <clears throat> and then one time we, again, we were in a blizzard and, and we had to find headquarters, a place to stay. And there was a, an old house and it was partially bombed, I think. So we won walked in it, but there was a roof over our head, but there was no food, no heat, no nothing. My mother, my mother said, well, should we stay here or should we keep going? Well, we, we are safe for staying there. In the middle of the night or early morning hours, a Russian soldier walked through the door with battle gear. <clears throat> and uh, we didn't know what to think. All of a sudden, he turned, walked away. What she was afraid of, he's going to bring his buddies and rape my, my mother and my sisters. That's what they usually did. So should she leave? I said, she had peace and she prayed to God, what, what should I do? I said, well, we better stay in here because where are we going to go in the heavy snow? We're going to die. So there, about half an hour later, a Russian soldier came. They, the old soldier came back with a bundle of wood. He built us a fire. And he had eggs, bacon, pan, he made us pancakes, eggs, whatever we needed. And, and, you, and soldiers don't walk around with eggs in their pockets, okay? <laughs> he had eggs in their pockets and bacon. He made, uh, made breakfast for us. He never said one word who he was or nothing. He put his rifle down, his helmet. Where did he get all the supplies? That's, he was an angel. <laughs> then he stayed with us a little longer and then he left in the, into, the, into the snow and never said a word. So my mother was looking for him. There was nowhere to be found. He came and went.
Mm-hmm. It was another time, <clears throat> there was an area we shouldn't have been. It was a minefield. My mother didn't know. But the Russians had it blocked. We couldn't get across. And uh, my, my mother was a little hard of hearing, but my older sister, Hata, she heard the rifle, click of a rifle. She told my mother, so we stopped. And the Russians wouldn't let us go. All of a sudden, there was a, uh, a civilian, German civilian guy, which you didn't see German, young German men in civilian clothes. They weren't around. He walked up to the Russian, talked perfect Russian to him, and then he left, and they opened up the gate. We walked through, and my mother was going to thank the German men for, for making it possible, and um, he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. She was going to thank him. Just a minute yeah. ago, he was there, and he was gone. He was an angel. Yeah. But we didn't know what we were getting into after that. It was a minefield. And then there was, then the Russians took us on a truck. They lifted us into a truck, and they were going to take us east to maybe right. slave labor camp or something. Okay. And it was cold, and then all of a sudden it turned warm. I don't know where we were, and then the truck got stuck in the mud. Wow. So they, they told us, they threw us off the truck. You're out of here. And the truck was up to our knees. I mean, the, the mud was up to our knees, and, the, and we were stuck. So we walked out of there, and, and it was... Another miracle we came through there. Yeah. All right, we're talking with Hans Berger, and he has written a book. And, uh, you know, let's, I don't know, can we put the picture of the book up real quick and uh, show it full screen? Here it is right here, but we'll put it up full screen. Hey, there it is. It's Hans Berger, A Bridge to Cross, the true story of one uh, family's uh, uh, flight from the Nazis. 436 Me TV, option 11, back in just a moment. Watch News Channel in Europe. The ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law, and, and they them no fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. We're back here on the program talking with Hans uh, Berger surviving all of the tragedies during the war, World War II, uh, in Nazi Germany. He survived the Germans, the Russians, the Allied bombing, uh, and the weather conditions and fighting hunger and all that. I don't know how he made it with his three sisters and his mom traveling through all those conditions trying to get away. Try to find a safe haven. How do you do that in, the, in those conditions? Caller, you're there. Go ahead. Oh, hello, sir. How are you doing today? Good. Go ahead. You're on the air. Good, Hans. Uh, yes, my great uncle, um, he actually died in a camp called Sorbibor. Did you ever hear about it? Uh, would you repeat it? it? My great uncle was from Poland, and he died in a camp called Sorbibor. Did you ever hear about it? Uh, no, I have not. Mm -mm. It was a war camp, and there's mostly a lot of Poles Jews were sent there. And my question to you is, is that when you finally made it here to the States, how was the transition from all you went through to here? How'd it go? <laughs> that was a, a rough deal. Uh, we left Germany. None of us spoke English. <laughs> None of us. What year was that? It was 1957. Know? They put me into high school. I couldn't participate in anything. It was a, <laughs> it was a nightmare. And but I I hung in there. I learned English in about a year. Who came here with you? My mom, my mom, my two sisters, and me. My older sister had to stay. She was married already in Germany, so mm -hmm. she stayed. Okay. And your father? Uh, he came, of course. They they wanted him. Um, Doctor Hanoiberg. He was a Jewish doctor who immigrated to the United States before Hitler took over, and he learned. He read about my dad's um, scientific studies through uh, medical journals, and he wanted him bad. My dad did some studies on Alzheimer's diseases and that uh -huh. kind of thing. So 
that's how we came to the United States. We were sponsored by him. Yeah, and so you ended up in Denver, right? Yes, and, beautiful place. Uh, you came to Fresno when? Uh, I came to Fresno after I got out of the Navy in 1963. 1963, so you've been here for quite some time, no question about that. I want to roll another piece of videotape and talk about a bridge that uh, is right near the Elba River near, I believe it's near Hamburg, is that correct? Uh, Hamburg, Germany. Uh, south of Hamburg. Yeah, south of Hamburg. It's called the uh, Tanger Monday Bridge, and we'll take a look at that right now. A lot of people trying to flee Germany, Nazi Germany during the war. So many people did not make it, though. No. They couldn't. They couldn't escape the Nazis, nor the Russians, nor the weather conditions. That's what makes your story so fascinating. As not, you know, who knows how many of these people in this video survived? We uh, don't know. Uh, the Brücke, they call it Bridge Brücke, is a bridge, Tangier Brücke. Yeah. And uh, we came across the Elbe River, I don't know which bridge it was, by train. And the train was, uh, nobody repaired it. It was by ready to fall down. But we still came across with the train, and it was sagging real bad. And everybody thought we'd all fall into the river, and that would have been the end of all of us. But we thank God we made it across. When people were fleeing, trying to flee Nazi Germany, where were they going? Did they know? Uh, a lot of them did not know which direction, just wanted to get away. Uh, the Nazis at that point to the end of the war, uh, they, they weren't around anymore, okay? They were pretty, pretty much exhausted. It was the Russians now, and they kept everybody back. And the reason it's called a bridge to cross is we uh, came, my mother again didn't go with the masses of people. She went on her own. So we got close to the bridge, but we couldn't get to where we wanted to, get, to go to, you know, to get across right. the bridge. So we went back at the end of the line. There were hundreds of thousands of people, refugees, waiting to get across that river, the Odenaise River, but it was impossible. So my mother, she had a lot of guts. She took us kids with a cart, and we went all the way to the front of the river where the bridge was, all the way to the mm -hmm. front. And people were hassling her, lady, get back where you're supposed to be. What are you doing here? Well, she walked all the way to the front, and there was a three-story building, uh, uh, a Russian general, I think he was up there, probably general or way up there in rank, uh, he mo motioned her to come up to his right. room. So she flew up those steps and left us with the kids there. With the, you know, she, felt, she, felt, she felt we were pretty safe with them. And he gave her a, uh, the pass to go across the river. We were the only ones passing. Everybody, they were dying by the thousands like flies, you know. We were yeah. the only ones getting to the American zone. I want to roll a piece of videotape. It's got sound on it. It is Adolf Hitler uh, talking about war and declaring war against the United States during World War II. Now, Hans Berger and his family never saw uh, Adolf Hitler during the war, although you believe that maybe one of your uncles did. I know you were telling he, he me earlier have. he, he could, could have. have. Uh, here is a piece of videotape that we pulled out of the archives of Hitler during the war. Nach einem Jahr kann ich euch hier wieder begrüßen. Ihr seid heute hier in dieser Muschel nur ein Ausschnitt dessen, was außer ihr über ganz Deutschland steht. Und wir möchten nun, dass ihr deutsche Jungen und deutsche Mädchen in euch all das aufnehmt, was wir hier ein uns von Deutschland hoffen. Wir wollen ein Volk sein. Und ihr, meine Jugend, soll dieses Volk nun werden. Wir wollen eins keine Glassen und Stände mehr sehen. Und ihr dürft den euch schon nicht das groß werden lassen. Wir wollen eins ein Reich sehen. Und ihr müsst euch schon dafür erziehen. Wir wollen, dass dieses Volk eins gehorsam ist und ihr müsst euch in den Gehorsam üben. Wir wollen, dass dieses Volk eins Frieden lieben und aber auch tapfer ist und ihr müsst 
Frühzeitig sein! Thousands of people, one of the many powerful speeches uh, made there by Adolf Hitler encouraging everybody to stand up and have the courage uh, to, to back, of course, not only the message of what Hitler was trying to portray to the people, but uh, stand up for the country. And you said in your book, and I'm going to read from your book, Hitler encouraged people to snitch on each other, to turn in their brothers, turn in their sisters, their mothers, their fathers into the police. Why? Um, Hitler wanted to get rid of people who opposed him any way he could, and apparently, if they, if you didn't see eye to eye with Hitler, you were a goner. Yeah. He didn't care who you. It, we were not Jewish. Uh, it was a regular German family. Um, if you, you, if you were Christian, Jewish, Gypsy, anybody, he just. Uh, and another portion of the book you write uh, on page 16, you say we saw many young blonde women pushing babies around in their carriages. On occasion, young men walked beside them who we thought they were their husbands. They were nothing, uh, that was nothing unusual about the scene except that there were too many of them. The majority of young men were fighting in the war. So why were these young men not fighting on the Russian front? We discovered later that Hitler was pairing blonde men and women with blue eyes to promote the master race. That's what Hitler wanted? That's, that's exactly what he wanted, yeah. And it was like a baby factory. Really? Mm -hmm. And so that's why those men with blonde hair, blue eyes, they were not on the front lines? No. They weren't? Yeah. Uh, some of them might have been, but they paired them up with uh, blonde uh, women. He wanted the Aryan race. That, that was his design. Quickly, we got about just a second left, but, but why, was, why were the Nazis killing their own people to a certain extent? Um, they went against the regime? That's it. Yeah, he was afraid. He was power hungry. He was afraid of opposition. And he oppressed anybody that would oppose him uh, any way he could. Hans, I want to put up the book one more time. Where can people get it? Because we're out of time here. And uh, there's the book right there. How, how can someone purchase your book if they want to read the book? Okay, the you can get it on Amazon, uh, also Barnes & Noble Online, uh, Smashwords. There are about 40 different uh, in online retailers you can purchase the book from. Okay. Also in town, it matches the bookstore. Uh, all, all things Fresno downtown has it. Uh, any you can go to any bookstore and get it. Okay, Hans Berger. Thank you so Glad much. Glad you survived. John. It was a pleasure. Hey, you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Yep, I appreciate it. it. You Hans bet. Berger. The book book is called A Bridge to Cross. Back with our second guests here on Connect with Me in just a moment. movies on over the air channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. When you like Ventura TV appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Frigidaire gallery appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an Energy Star qualified French Door Frigidaire Gallery Refrigerator. Quality appliances for the way you live. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise. Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. 
Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Watch Dr. TV on Over the Air Channel 13.9. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Save now on Frigidaire's Advanced Affinity Laundry Pair. Let Frigidaire save you energy, water, and time. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. From a top secret location, it's the spies who love me. Bringing together MeTV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Brave. Now what are we going to do? The best we can. Suave. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. Me TV Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Frigidaire. It means the first refrigerator. It means a history of innovations that help make your home life better. And now we introduce the new Frigidaire French Door Refrigerator with over 100 ways to organize for maximum flexibility. Built with adjustable flip up and slide under shelving and stackable crisper drawers. It's the refrigerator that flexes to fit it all, no matter what your day will bring. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Attention all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. He's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada on Now chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. The Fresno Grizzlies open up their uh, regular season 2015 style at Chickasaw Park on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. They are no longer affiliated with the world champion San Francisco Giants. Their affiliation now is with the Houston Astros. And so what is happening on Thursday, in case you want to know, is a huge block party out in front of the stadium prior to the game. It starts about 4 o'clock. It's from 4 to 6. And many of the people who will be there that you will see that night on Thursday uh, will be Knights of the Shield Raider Booster Club. We've got Albert DeLuna here in the studio on the far end right there. And we also have the Raider Reaper, Reaper. with us. Raider Reaper? Yes. Are you the Grim Reaper or are you the Raider, Raider, Reaper? Raider Reaper? Both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tell us, tell us first of all, before we get into the Grizzlies uh, baseball game on Thursday night and the big block party, why are the Raiders so bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It's gone downhill ever since the Super Bowl with, against Tampa Bay. Uh, yeah. Uh, but things are looking up. You know, I've said it in the past. Things are looking up, and it didn't happen. But I think with uh, Derek Carr in the in the driver's seat there driving the car, you know, start the car. I think with Derek Carr there and them building the team around Derek Carr, I can finally say I think it is looking up. You know, it's going to be a good season. Yeah. Tell us what's going on Thursday night with this block party and what's the, what the purpose is of the block party. And are the Knights of the Shield Raider Booster Club, they're part of this, but are they are they in charge of, of organizing this event? Well, it, it's a, it turned out to be a block party. It was a block party where they were shutting down H Street, but now it's in the whole surrounding areas around the whole stadium. Uh, really? It's going to be in the mall. It's going to be all around. It's, so it's surrounding the whole stadium now. And, yeah, we are uh, in charge of uh, if you want to. There's still time to get vendor spots out there. And if you want to get a vendor spot, you can contact me or uh, Nick Mata. You can go to our Facebook page and uh, 
just try to contact one of us and there's a lot of space still available but they're going quick purpose of the block party is what we just want to bring in a lot of people uh, for a great day I have fun uh, there's gonna be wiffle ball out there we're gonna have an interactive uh, interactive football course for the kids uh, there's gonna be pony rides fire truck will be out there um, bounce houses DJs there's gonna be a lot of entertainment all over the place usually the first night opening night there are thousands of people there oftentimes it's a sellout the only other time that that really happens is on taco throwdown night so this is a Correct. big night what yeah. do you think about the new affiliation with the with the Astros one of the worst teams in baseball we'll be talking to Derek Franks here on Thursday morning but uh, is that a good or a bad move in your opinion well I think it's good for Houston because we all know a lot of champions came out of Fresno going to the Giants. So they all came to there and, uh, you know, there's good players that come out of Fresno, out of the Grizzly team. So I, I see the Houston team having some good players in the future. Right. But do you see an affiliation with a team that really is going nowhere to a certain extent? And it's so Houston is so far away from us. We have no real connection to Texas or to Houston? Well, we do have some sort of connection with, with Texas because of the agriculture out here. We have a lot of people that migrate here to work, and there is a lot of, a lot of people here from uh, Texas. And me more into football than anything, I know there's a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans here, and I'm sure there's a lot of fans of the Houston Texans that'll, that'll follow the baseball team also. Okay. Yeah. Going to take a break here and connect with me. More to come here. 436 Me TV Option 11. If you want to call in and weigh in, the Grizzlies play on Thursday night. It's their opening game. And the Knights of the Shield Raider Booster Club people are here. They're promoting that big blockbuster party that's taking place before the game, a couple of hours before the game. It starts uh, right here in the city of Fresno at Chickchancy Park. Back in a moment. Want to create something extraordinary? Perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance, and you, when only the best will do. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. You know, it was a pretty unbelievable opening night for the Giants last night as Madison Bumgarner won his game against the Arizona Diamondbacks and in sunny gray, this guy goes seven plus innings uh, of a no hitter, and then he ends up uh, winning the game on a one hitter. Of course, the A's uh, beat Texas eight to nothing, so both teams off to a fairly good start. But the Giants have some pitching problems. You know, it looks like Matt Cain isn't gonna isn't going to pitch. Uh, PB's not going to pitch tonight, so some problems there for the Giants uh, in their starting pitching. But getting back to uh, the Grizzlies, uh, the affiliation, the park, their problems. Uh, Chick Chancy uh, Casino is shut down. I want to roll the videotape. We'll take an aerial shot. One of the most beautiful ballparks anywhere that you'll see in the minor leagues, and it is Chick Chancy Park right here in the city of Fresno. What do you think about people going to a game at Chick Chancy? A lot of people say, you know, I don't want to go down there at night. It's not, it's not safe. Uh, well, in my experience, I've never had any problems out there. It's pretty safe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the parking structure that's there, the five-story parking structure is pretty close, and, you know, in all my times going to the game, I haven't seen any problems out there. I would recommend to anybody to come down there. Uh, there's plenty of security. Um, shouldn't have a problem. And everybody's there to have a good time. Will this affiliation with Houston hurt them? I don't think so. I hope not. But I, I don't think it will. Um, I think they'll be all right. Why aren't more people going to the games, do you think? You know, I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, um, maybe... Sheesh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure about I that. I wish I knew the answer, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the $64,000 yeah. question. Why aren't people yeah. going? It's a well, great park. 
ticket prices are fairly reasonable. Right. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, they've been affiliated with the Giants for so many years. Now they're with Houston. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, so the block party is going to take place there at the park. What's, I mean, okay, we all kind of know what a block party is, at least I do. Right. What, what's, what's the concept of this party going to be? What's the main thrust of it? Well, what we're, what we're trying to do is uh, get everybody excited about opening day. And uh, we want to make it fun for kids for all ages so we we have a you know we have mm -hmm. people out there selling memorabilia you know sports memorabilia we have bounce houses for the kids there's going to be food food out there food vendors uh just like a big festival just like a, a you know two hours before the game come out and have a good time and uh, just carry it on into the game will it be similar to the taco throwdown night similar S similar but uh but this will be outdoors and there won't be as there won't be tacos everywhere, and uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, well, there it, might uh, be. <laughs> yeah, there might be some food vendors that are doing tacos, but uh, we're looking at more of an interaction thing with kids. You know, wiffle ball, uh, football, inter, you know, with uh, doing sports course, and yeah, it's going to be really great. Yeah. Uh, anybody tuning in right now, if you take this shot of these two right here, this is not the black hole at the <laughs> Oakland Coliseum. Okay, it's not the black hole. Uh, the black hole, of course, is that uh, portion of the end zone where the Raiders, of course, they jump into the seats uh, into the black hole uh, if they right. score a touchdown, and right. uh, they're embraced by the fans. And many people in the black hole look like the Grim Reaper, the Raider Reaper right here. And uh, even worse, right? Right, right. And, and we're and we're going to have a lot of uh, Raider characters out there. Really? Uh, the, on yeah, Thursday night. On Thursday night, there's going to be a bunch of Raider characters out there. Right. Uh, they're going to be walking around all around the stadium, uh, in the mall there, and uh, you know, just going to be greeting the kids, taking pictures, and it, it's all free of charge. You know, yeah. you're only going to have to spend money if you if you want to buy a drink or if you want to buy some food or. Or get something from a vendor. What time does it all start? Starts at four o'clock, and it'll it'll go all the way up until game time, which is about six thirty. And uh, yeah, like another thing for the kids that are going to have a great time is the fire truck's going to be out there. So the 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 P, uh, not the PD, but the, I'm sorry, the, the Fresno Fire Department's going to be out there showing the kids all the yeah. nozzles and yeah. all the workings of the fire truck. Got a quick call here before we go. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, let me tell these guys right here. I think. Uh, win or lose with the Raiders, being crazy and everything, draws in more people, okay? And I think they're, they're the best draw of all the stadiums. Win or lose, they're always backing their team. They never give up. They could be there a thousand years and that win. But I love them when I see them on, on TV. Boy, if you keep doing what you got to do, I mean, I watch you guys here. And uh, you guys are great, no matter what. Win or lose, that's Thanks. what I like about Hey, thanks a lot for the call. I Thank appreciate you. it very Thank much. You. The only thing I have, and I'm a big Raider fan, but the only thing I've had against the Raiders is their commitment to excellence and right. winning the last right. decade or two. Uh, mm -hmm. It hasn't been there. The focus yeah. has been on other things, moving back and forth to L.A. Are we going to move again? We want improvements to the Coliseum. Yeah. And um, I, do you see the commitment for winning? Well, I'm starting to see it now. Uh, I didn't like so much of the coaching changes uh, yeah. I think Hugh Jackson needed more time yeah I, I don't think they you know he, he got us an eight and eight season and he was let go <laughs> the following season so, I know you know I think he should have been given another uh, another season at least to see what he could do and it, it seemed like the players were behind him so going into the future um, I hope we get the players following their coach and all the backing all right uh, we got to go but the uh you know, the big block party is on Thursday, uh, starting at 4 o'clock at Ch Chansey Park. And then the opening, uh, that's the opening night uh, for the uh, for the Grizzlies at the stadium. And it starts at 7 o'clock, but uh, big block party from 4 to 6 or 6.30. Guys, right. thanks for showing up. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it you. very Thank much. You. And uh, don't worry about that facial. It's, it looks good. <laughs> looks, I don't care what they, uh, don't worry about the rumors, okay? Anyway, <laughs> and good luck to you and the Raiders this year. This Thank coming. you. And Thank Derek you. Carr. I love Derek you gotta Carr. You got to come visit us sometime. I will. I meetings. will. Hey, you guys yeah. got to come back. I love Derek right. Carr. Got to go. See you tomorrow. Hey, we're talking martial arts and MMA boxing for kids tomorrow. You'll not want to miss it. See you tomorrow on MeTV Fresno.